This article is about the business between 1904 and 1987. For the present day owners of the same business enterprise, see Rolls Royce Holdings for Aero Engines, etc., and Rolls Royce Motor Cars. For other uses, see Rolls Royce Disambiguation. Rolls Royce was a British luxury car and later an aero engine manufacturing business established in 1904 by the partnership of Charles Rolls and Henry Royce. Building on Royce's reputation established with his cranes they quickly developed a reputation for superior engineering by manufacturing the best car in the world. The First World War brought them into manufacturing aero engines. Joint development of jet engines began in 1940 and they entered production. Rolls-Royce has built an enduring reputation for development and manufacture of engines for defense and civil aircraft. In the late 1960s Rolls-Royce became hopelessly crippled by its mismanagement of development of its advanced RB211 jet engine and the consequent cost overruns, though it ultimately proved a great success. In 1971 the owners were obliged to liquidate their business. The useful portions were bought by a new government-owned company named Rolls-Royce Limited which continued the core business but sold the holdings in British Aircraft Corporation BAC almost immediately and transferred ownership of the profitable but now financially insignificant car division to Rolls-Royce Motors Holdings Limited. This it sold to Vickers in 1980. Rolls-Royce obtained consent to drop 1971 from its name in 1977. The Rolls-Royce business remained nationalized until 1987 when, renaming the owner Rolls-Royce plc, the government sold it to the public. Rolls-Royce plc still owns and operates Rolls-Royce's principal business though since 2003 it is technically a subsidiary of listed holding company Rolls-Royce Holdings plc. A marketing survey in 1987 showed that only Coca-Cola was a more widely known brand than Rolls-Royce. Topic motor cars In 1884 Henry Royce started an electrical and mechanical business. He made his first car, a two-cylinder Royce 10, in his Manchester factory in 1904. Henry Royce was introduced to Charles Rolls at the Midland Hotel, Manchester on 4 May of that year. Rolls was proprietor of an early motor car dealership, C.S. Rolls & Co., in Fulham. In spite of his preference for three- or four-cylinder cars, Rolls was impressed with the Royce 10, and in a subsequent agreement on 23 December 1904 agreed to take all the cars Royce could make. There would be four models, a 10-horsepower two-cylinder model selling at £395 £40,000 in 2014, a 15-horsepower three-cylinder at £500 £50,000 in 2014, a 20-horsepower four-cylinder at £650 £60,000 in 2014, a 30-horsepower six-cylinder model priced at £890 £90,000 in 2014, all would be badged as Rolls Royces, and be sold exclusively by Rolls. The first Rolls Royce car, the Rolls Royce 10 horsepower, was unveiled at the Paris Salon in December 1904. Rolls Royce Limited was formed on 15 March 1906, by which time it was apparent that new premises were required for production of cars. After considering sites in Manchester, Coventry, Bradford and Leicester, it was an offer from Derby's Council of Cheap Electricity that resulted in the decision to acquire a 12.7 acres 51,000 square meters site on the southern edge of that city. The new factory was largely designed by Royce, and production began in early 1908, with a formal opening on 9 July 1908 by Sir John Montague. The investment in the new company required further capital to be raised, and on 6 December 1906 £100,000 of new shares were offered to the public. In 1907, Rolls-Royce bought out C.S. Rolls & Co., the non-motor car interests of Royce Limited continued to operate separately. <laughs> Rolls-Royce 40 fiftieths. During 1906 Royce had been developing an improved six-cylinder model with more power than the Rolls-Royce 30 horsepower. Initially designated the 40 50ths of a horsepower, this was Rolls-Royce's first all-new model. 
In March 1908 Claude Johnson, commercial managing director and sometimes described as the hyphen in Rolls-Royce, succeeded in persuading Royce and the other directors that Rolls-Royce should concentrate exclusively on the new model, and all the earlier models were duly discontinued. The new 4050ths was responsible for Rolls-Royce's early reputation with over 6,000 built. Its chassis was used as a basis for the first British armoured car used in both world wars. Topic. Rolls Royce Eagle Aero Engine Aero engine manufacture began in 1914 because the government requested it. Rolls Royce's Eagle, the first example was made in 1915, was the first engine to make a non stop transatlantic crossing by aeroplane when in June 1919 two Eagles powered the converted Vickers Vimy bomber on the transatlantic flight of Alcock and Brown. Topic Springfield USA In 1921 Rolls-Royce opened a new factory in Springfield, Massachusetts in the United States to help meet demand where a further 1,701 Springfield Ghosts were built. This factory operated for 10 years, closing in 1931. It was located at the former American Wire Wheel Factory on Hendy Street, with the administration offices at 54 Waltham Avenue. Springfield was the earlier location for the Durier Motor Wagon Company, the location where the first American gasoline-powered vehicle was built. Their first chassis was completed in 1921. Bodies were supplied by Rolls-Royce Custom Coachwork and by Brewster & Co. in Long Island City, New York. Topic. Rolls-Royce 20 After the First World War, Rolls-Royce successfully avoided attempts to encourage British car manufacturers to merge. Faced with falling sales of the 4050ths, later known as Silver Ghost, Rolls-Royce introduced the smaller, cheaper 20 in 1922, effectively ending the one-model policy followed since 1908. Topic: Rolls-Royce Phantom After the introduction of the Phantom in 1925 the old 4050ths model was referred to as the Silver Ghost. Topic. Bentley In 1931 Rolls-Royce acquired Bentley, the small sports, racing car maker and potential rival, after the latter's finances failed to weather the onset of the Great Depression. Rolls-Royce stopped production of the new big Bentley 8-liter, which was threatening sales of their current Phantom, disposed of remaining Bentley assets and made use of just the Bentley name and its repute. After some years of development Rolls-Royce produced a new quite different ultra-civilized medium-size range of Bentleys advertising them as the silent sports car. They were very much in the Rolls-Royce mold. From soon after World War II until 2002 standard Bentley and Rolls-Royce cars were often very nearly identical apart from the radiator grille and minor details. In 1933, the color of the Rolls-Royce radiator monogram was changed from red to black because the red sometimes clashed with the coachwork color selected by clients, and not as a mark of respect for the death of Royce as is commonly stated. Topic. Crew The British government built a shadow factory in Crewe in 1938 for Rolls-Royce where they could build their Merlin and Griffin aero engines. In 1946 car production was moved there for space to construct bodies and to leave space for aero engines at Derby. The site was bought from the government in 1973. It is now Bentley Crewe. Topic. Second World War In 1940 a contract was signed with the Packard Motor Car Company in Detroit, Michigan, for the production of Merlin Aero engines in the USA. Production focused on Aero engines but a variant of the Merlin engine, known as the Meteor, was developed for the Cromwell tank. 
The Meteor's development completed in 1943 the same team at the Belper Foundry restarted work on an eight-cylinder car engine widening its uses and it became the pattern for the British Army's B range of petrol engines for post-war combat vehicles in particular in Alvis's FV600 range, Daimler's Ferret, Humber's Hornet and Pig and Austin's Champ. Topic. Post-war diversification Topic. Motor bodies After the war, in 1946, Rolls-Royce and Bentley car production moved to crew where they began to assemble complete Bentley cars with body pressings made by Pressed Steel Company. Previously they had built only the chassis, leaving the bodies to specialist coach builders. In 1939 Rolls-Royce brought one of the specialist coach builders completely in-house by buying the remaining capital of Park Ward Limited, which since 1936 in conjunction with Rolls-Royce had been building short production runs of all metal saloon bodies on Bentley chassis. In 1959 Rolls-Royce bought coach builder H.J. Mulliner and the two businesses were put together as H.J. Mulliner Park Ward. Topic. Diesel engines Shrewsbury Luxury cars did not fit with the new mood of post-war austerity. After starting design and development of what became their C-Series diesel engine range in 1948, Rolls-Royce began to produce diesel engines in 1951. By 1955 it provided diesel engines for automotive, railway, industrial, earth-moving and marine use. Sentinel Shrewsbury Limited was bought in 1956. Sentinel made machine tools and industrial locomotives. Rolls-Royce took over Sentinel's Shrewsbury factory for diesel engine production and all its diesel work was transferred there. West Riding manufacturer of diesel shunting locomotives, Thomas Hill Rotherham Limited, was added to the group in 1963. In 1973 when Shrewsbury activities were put under the umbrella of new owner, Rolls-Royce Motors, the range of diesel engines included C-range, 4, 6 and 8-cylinder engines with power output from 100 to 450 bhp. Used in generating sets, compressors etc., construction equipment, railway and other industrial purposes and marine propulsion. Eagle, a modified version of the C-range 6-cylinder engine named Eagle is used in heavy vehicles, their output 200 to 300 bhp. D range, V engines with outputs from 400 to 750 bhp for generating sets, marine and railway applications. Topic. Aero engines In 1907, Charles Rolls, whose interests had turned increasingly to flying, tried unsuccessfully to persuade Royce and the other directors to design an aero engine. When World War I broke out in August 1914, Rolls-Royce were taken by surprise. As a manufacturer of luxury cars, Rolls-Royce was immediately vulnerable, and Claude Johnson thought the bank would withdraw its overdraft facility on which Rolls-Royce depended at that time. Nevertheless, believing that war was likely to be short-lived the directors initially decided not to seek government work making aero engines. However, this position was quickly reversed and Rolls-Royce was persuaded by the War Office to manufacture 50 air-cooled V8 engines under license from Renault. Meanwhile, the Royal Aircraft Factory asked Rolls-Royce to design a new 200-horsepower engine. Despite initial reluctance they agreed, and during 1915 developed Rolls-Royce's first aero engine, the 12-cylinder Eagle. This was quickly followed by the smaller six-cylinder Hawk, the 190 horsepower, 140 kilowatts Falcon, and just before the end of the war, the larger 675 horsepower, 503 kilowatts Condor. Throughout World War I, Rolls-Royce struggled to build aero engines in the quantities required by the War Office. However, with the exception of Brazil Straker in Bristol Rolls-Royce resisted pressure to license production to other manufacturers, fearing that the engine's much-admired quality and reliability would risk being compromised. 
Instead the Derby factory was extended to enable Rolls-Royce to increase its own production rates. By the late 1920s, aero engines made up most of Rolls-Royce's business. Henry Royce's last design was the Merlin aero engine, which was first flown in prototype form in 1935, although he had died in 1933. This was developed from the R engine, which had powered a record-breaking Supermarine S6B seaplane to almost 400 miles per hour, 640 kilometers per hour in the 1931 Schneider Trophy. The Merlin was a powerful supercharged V-12 engine and was fitted into many World War II aircraft, the British Hawker Hurricane, Supermarine Spitfire, de Havilland Mosquito twin engine, Avro Lancaster four engine, a development of the Avro Manchester with its unreliable Rolls-Royce Vulture engines, Vickers Wellington twin engine. It also transformed the American North American P-51 Mustang into a competitor for the best fighter of its time, its engine a Merlin engine built by Packard under license. Over 160,000 Merlin engines were produced, including over 30,000 by the Ford Motor Company at Trafford Park, Manchester. During the war most Rolls-Royce flight testing of engines was carried out from Hucknall Aerodrome. The Merlin crossed over into military land vehicle use as the Meteor powering the Centurion tank among others. Many Meteor engines used engine blocks and parts that failed requirements for high-performance engines, but were suitable for use in the derated 480 kilowatts 640 horsepower Meteor. Rolls-Royce came into jet turbines through an exchange of assets with Rover and in the post-World War II period Rolls-Royce made significant advances in gas turbine engine design and manufacture. The Dart and Tyne turboprop engines were particularly important, enabling airlines to cut times for shorter journeys whilst jet airliners were introduced on longer services. The Dart engine was used in Armstrong Whitworth A.660 Argosy, Avro 748, Fokker F-27 Friendship, Handley Page Herald and Vickers Viscount aircraft, whilst the more powerful Tyne powered the Brigade Atlantique, Transall C-160, Short Belfast, and Vickers Vanguard, and the senior N-4 hovercraft. Many of these turboprops are still in service. Amongst the jet engines of this period was the RB163 Spey, which powers the Hawker Siddeley Trident, BAC-111, Grumman Gulfstream II and Fokker F-28 Fellowship. During the late 1950s and 1960s there was a significant rationalization of all aspects of British aerospace and this included aero engine manufacturers. In 1966 Rolls-Royce acquired Bristol Siddeley, which had resulted from the merger of Armstrong Siddeley and Bristol Aero Engines in 1959 and incorporated it as the Bristol Siddeley Division. Bristol Siddeley, with its principal factory at Filton, near Bristol, had a strong base in military engines, including the Olympus, Viper, Pegasus, Vectored Thrust, and Orpheus. They were also manufacturing the Olympus 593 MK610 to be used in Concord in collaboration with Snecma. They also had a turbofan project with Snecma. Leaves Den Aerodrome, Watford was originally owned by the Ministry of Defence and used during World War II for the manufacture of Mosquito and Halifax aircraft. For a number of years, Rolls-Royce used the site for the manufacture of helicopter engines until the site closed in June 1993. The former Rolls-Royce factory at Watford is now known as the Leaves Den Film Studios and has produced world-famous films, including the James Bond, Star Wars and Harry Potter series. Topic RB211, the 1971 receivership and nationalization The amalgamations and disappearances of the 1950s and 1960s left a small number of major airframe manufacturers based in only a few countries. The competition for the very large contracts to supply their engines grew intense. Expensive research and development became vital. Real profits came from the maintenance contracts which might peak a whole human generation later. By the 1980s it was said that each generation of aero engines cost around 10 times that of its parent. At this time Rolls-Royce employed 80,000 people and it was Britain's 14th largest company in terms of manpower. 
It was generally known that problems had recently arisen requiring government support of the RB211 program as one outcome of intense financial competition with Pratt and & Whitney and General Electric for the original RB211 contract. In the new year of 1971 financial problems caused largely by development of this new RB211 turbofan engine designed and developed for Lockheed Aircraft Corporation's new L1011 TriStar lead, after several government-provided cash subsidies Cities, to the recognition Rolls-Royce had no resources left and it voluntarily entered receivership 4 February 1971, there were said to have been acrimonious telephone conversations between U.S. President Richard Nixon and the British Prime Minister Edward Heath but these were subsequently denied. Responding to questions as to how the situation could have arisen the chief executive advised that in their calculations they were guided by the success of their estimates in the launching of their SPAY engine. Had the government simply nationalized Rolls-Royce it would have been unable to avoid the obligations to Lockheed. The situation was handled in the usual manner with the assets being sold for cash, in this case to the government, leaving the massive liabilities to be dealt with by Rolls-Royce Limited using the funds realized by the sale. However the government would not fix a purchase price for the assets until the situation became clearer because without a continuing business many of them might be worthless. In the meantime the government would use the assets to continue the activities of the aero engine, marine and industrial gas turbine and small engine divisions that were important to national defense, the collective programs with other countries and to many air forces and civil airlines. A new company 1971, was incorporated that made to purchase substantially the whole of the undertakings and assets of the four divisions of Rolls-Royce connected with gas turbine engines. The original company, Rolls-Royce Limited, was placed in liquidation on 4 October 1971, asking their own government for support Lockheed warned that a switch to either Pratt & Whitney or General Electric engines would delay production by an extra six months and might force Lockheed into bankruptcy. The receiver negotiated with Lockheed which consented to waive damages allowing the plant to be shut down. The continuing support of the trade creditors was also achieved by the receiver in spite of threats to demand immediate payments in full and to withdraw supplies. The first asset sold was British Aircraft Corporation bought equally by Vickers and GEC. The receiver floated Rolls-Royce Motors in 1973. <laughs> New board The new owner, Rolls-Royce Limited, had among its board members Lord Cole, a former chairman of Unilever, Sir Arnold Weinstock, managing director of GEC, Hugh Conway, managing director Rolls-Royce Gas Turbines, Dr. Stanley Hooker, Rolls-Royce Bristol, Sir William Cook, an advisor to the Minister of Defence, Sir St. John Elstub, managing director of Imperial Metal Industries, and Sir Charles Elworthy, former chief of defence staff. Topic. Lockheed and Rolls-Royce takeoff The new aircraft with its three RB211 engines left USA for the first time and arrived in Paris on 1 June 1971. At Palmdale, California the L1011 received its U.S. Federal Aviation Administration's Certificate of Airworthiness on 14 April 1972, nine months late. On the day the chairman of Lockheed said, Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 we know that in airline service it RB211 will prove itself to be one of the leading power plants in aviation history. The first airliner was delivered to Eastern Airlines on 5 April 1972 but it had been beaten in the race to production by McDonnell Douglas's DC-10. Topic. 1973 Rolls-Royce Motors Rolls-Royce Motors Limited was incorporated on 25 April 1971, two and a half months after Rolls-Royce fell into receivership. Under the ownership of the receiver it began to trade in April 1971 manufacturing motor cars, diesel and petrol engines, coachwork and other items previously made by Rolls-Royce's motor car and diesel divisions and Mulliner Park Ward. It continued to take precision engineering work on subcontracts. 
In June 1971 it acquired all the business and assets used by the motor car and diesel divisions of Rolls-Royce and Mulliner Park Ward. Rolls-Royce Motors permitted uses of the various Rolls-Royce trademarks was very precisely defined. At the end of 1972, Rolls-Royce Motors employees in the United Kingdom were 5,855 in the car division and 2,311 in the diesel division, a total of 8,166 people. In May 1973, it was sold to Rolls-Royce Motors Holdings Limited in preparation for its public flotation. Topic. Car division At that time the car division as well as making cars and special coachwork carried out investment foundry work and the machining of aero engine components and produced piston engines for light aircraft together with other petrol and multi-fuel engines. Both divisions carried out development work for HM government. The car division's headquarters were in Pims Lane and Minchell New Road. Crew, bespoke coachbuilding remained in Hythe Road and High Road Willesden, London. The crew former shadow factory premises were bought from the government at this time. Topic. Diesel division The diesel division made several types of diesel engine at its premises in Whitchurch Road, Shrewsbury as well as combustion equipment for aero turbine engines. Rolls-Royce Motors products Motor cars Diesel engines Aero turbine engine components and aircraft piston engines mainly for Rolls-Royce 1971 Other engines and products, B range of 6 and 8 cylinder petrol engines K range of multi-fuel engines Various transmissions for fighting and other vehicles Diesel shunting locomotives Thomas Hill, Rotherham Topic. Flotation of Rolls-Royce Motors Holdings In the event the flotation met with a disappointing public response and more than 80% of the issue was left in the hands of the underwriters. Topic. Vickers Limited merger On 6 August 1980 the shareholders' agreement to the merger of Rolls-Royce Motors Holdings and Vickers Limited became unconditional. Topic. Perkins The Rolls-Royce diesel business was acquired from Vickers in 1984 by Perkins. Perkins further developed the Eagle diesels into the Perkins TX series of engines. Topic: 1977 Rolls-Royce drops 1971 from its name. The name of Rolls-Royce 1971 Limited was changed to Rolls-Royce Limited on the 31st of December 1977, the end of the company's financial year. The original Rolls-Royce Limited incorporated in 1906 and still in liquidation had been renamed Rolls-Royce Realizations Limited and had consented in March 1977 to the 1971 company being named Rolls-Royce Limited Limited was replaced by PLC Public Limited Company in the summer of 1986 so shares could be offered to the public and traded on share markets. Topic 1987 privatization In April 1987 the government offered for sale all Rolls-Royce PLC shares. The heavily advertised issue was a remarkable success, Rolls-Royce's was an exceptionally long-term business. Before a civil aero engine went into service its development could take four to six years, military engines often longer. Production might then extend a further 50 years including the manufacture of spare parts required long after complete engine production ends. Topic. Customers 
According to the prospectus published for the 1987 issue of shares to members of the public Rolls-Royce was by then one of only three enterprises outside USSR and China able to design develop and produce large gas turbine engines. At that time its engines were installed in the aircraft of more than 270 civil carriers and were used by 110 armed services and 700 operators of executive and corporate aircraft, in addition its turbines powered the naval vessels of 25 different nations. Over 175 industrial customers operated Rolls-Royce gas turbines for power generation, gas and oil pumping and other industrial purposes. Its single most important customer was the United Kingdom's government. In the preceding five years about 70% of production went outside the United Kingdom. Topic competition Rolls-Royce's competitors were GE and Pratt and & Whitney UTC. Aero engines were then only a part of GE and UTC activities as major industrial groups. Others included Snecma, Turbomeca, MTU, Fiat Aviazione in Europe and USA's Avco, Garrett and General Motors Allison. In spite of it being an exceptionally competitive field a number of the smaller manufacturers were already in collaboration with GE or with other smaller manufacturers as was Rolls-Royce. Topic Divisions and Products At that time Rolls-Royce was organized into five business groups, one. ICEG Civil Aero, demand governed by airline activity and profitability major engines in 1987, RB211-524, 535 series, IAE V2500 for Airbus A320, a consortium of Rolls-Royce 30%, Pratt & Whitney 30%, JAEC 23%, MTU 11% and Fiat 6% T, a development of the space superfan engines out of production but generating a significant demand for Spare Savon 1951, Conway 1960, Dart 1953, Olympus 593 1976, RB211-22B 1972, Spey 1964, Tyne 1960-2. MEG Military Aero – Demand had been stable recently and so of major importance to Rolls-Royce major engines in 1987, RB199 Pegasus with vectored thrust for VTOL combat aircraft a door spay Viper helicopter engine Snome Gem RTM 322 EJ-200 missile engine Sedan 3. I&M Industrial and Marine – Aero-derived gas turbine engines 4. Repair and Overhaul 5. Nuclear? Submarine steam raising equipment Together with these services Supply Corporate engineering Topic. Products Topic. Cars Chassis only, no Rolls-Royce built Rolls-Royce body until Silver Dawn 1904-06 10 horsepower 1905-05 15 horsepower 1905-08 20 horsepower 1905-06 30 horsepower 1905-06 V8 1906-25 40 50 Silver Ghost 1922 to 2920 1925 to 2940 50ths phantom 1929 to 36 2025 1929 to 35 phantom 2 1936 to 38 25 30ths 1936 to 39 phantom 3 1938 39 wraith 1946 to 59 Silver Wraith 1949 to 55 Silver Dawn with first factory bodies using panels pressed by Pressed Steel Company Cowley 1950 to 56 Phantom IV 1955 to 65 Silver Cloud factory bodies using panels pressed by Pressed Steel Co 1959 to 68 Phantom V 1965-80 Silver Shadow Monocoque Integral Body Chassis wholly built by Rolls-Royce 1968-92 Phantom V 
1971 Rolls-Royce Cornish Bentley models from 1933 chassis only 1933 to 37 Bentley 3 and a half L 1936 to 39 Bentley 4 and a quarter L 1939 to 41 Bentley Mark 5 Topic Aircraft Rolls-Royce Thrust Measuring Rig Rolls-Royce Mustang Mk. X 